Hi everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central, and we are coming to you with another Lightboard lesson video. And today we're going to talk about PCI DSS uh, compliance. PCI DSS stands for the Payment Card Industry Data Security Standards. And what this was, or what this is, is uh, this is this is kind of born out of the concept of a lot of credit card transactions that happen online. And so, uh, man, you just like me do a lot of credit card stuff online, maybe every day, maybe, maybe not every day, but a lot of times. And so whenever you do those credit card transactions, you want to make sure everything's secure. You want to make sure that your credit card's not stolen and just all that kind of stuff. And so what happened way back several years ago, um, the major credit card companies got together. They said, hey, let's, let's formulate some kind of a standard that says we're going to keep everything secure, we're going to keep everything, you know, standardized, we're going to put policies in place, and let's kind of get let's kind of get our wrap our arms around this thing a little bit. So out of that was born this PCI DSS uh, standards, this this compliance. And so now it's become this big thing. So if you're a, if you do any kind of credit card transactions, you need to be in compliance with PCI DSS standards. And so as of April of this year, April 2016. Uh, the brand new version, the newest version came out, it's version 3.2. And so, uh, so they've, they've got all these different things that you have to comply with. And so I wanted to talk about PCI DSS and then how it relates to the big IP specifically. And so I'll, I'll start up here with maybe a little uh, picture of you've got this user who wants to conduct some kind of credit card transaction to some web application out here. Um, you know, maybe they're going to Amazon.com to, uh, to, you know, buy something, you know, Christmas is coming up or whatever. They want to go buy that thing. Well, so they're going to go and they're going to put their credit card, you know, the credit card number is going to be part of that transaction over here to buy that brand new thing, right? Well, as they, as they flow into that web application, then the server that handles all that transaction, everything needs to comply with this PCI DSS stuff. So a lot of companies out there say, Hey, you know, man, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to take all these different web servers and put all these different, you know, things on them to make sure everything's in compliance. And so the heart of, of what I was gonna talk about today is, is the way that you can put a big IP in the middle of that, and then your backend web servers, you don't have to mess with all the PCI DSS compliance on those. So take this same, uh, this same little use case of a credit card transaction. So, you know, user is still here, you've got your, you got your web uh, app over here. Well, let's put a big IP in the middle. So here's your big IP. And so the user's gonna come into the big IP. And then this thing right here is PCI DSS compliant, check. And then these guys don't have to worry about all that stuff. And then of course, once you go through the big IP, it's gonna come back to your web applications. So the question then becomes, well, what, what does it take to be PCI DSS compliant? And it, they've got several different goals and several different uh, uh, priorities and, 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 and things that you need to do. And so a few of those that I was going to walk through, number one is, uh, the, or the first one that they say is build and maintain a secure network. And so, um, the, so that's kind of the overall goal. They've got a couple of different sub you know, priorities that they look at to say this is exactly what we need you to do. We need you to secure all the transactions that are over, a, over an unsecured network, like encrypt those transactions, that kind of thing. Make sure you've got a firewall in place, those types of things. So to build and maintain a secure network, one thing that's really cool about the Big IP is it's an ICSA certified firewall. And so the Big IP, whether you're running LTM or APM or ASM, whatever, it's built on the foundation of TMOS. Um, and that has been certified as an ICSA certified firewall. So you run Big IP at all, you've got a good firewall in the middle. So that that gets to the heart of that build and maintain a secure network. And so another one is protect the, uh, the credit card data itself. And so let's say the web application back here, again, we'll use say Amazon or whatever, uh, some online marketplace, um, the user is gonna come in and request that item and they're gonna put in their credit card information. Well, a couple of things you can do with the big IP is our, uh, our application security manager, the ASM has a feature it's a, it's, a, it's a credit card uh, protection mechanism. There's also an eye rule that does this, but now it's, now it's featured, uh, it's, it's a built-in feature in the ASM. Um, so if there's a credit card number, so that, let's say that there's a credit card number that was put in by the user 
and now this web application, they have your credit card, and then they're going to display, you know, hey, here's your receipt, or here's the, you know, the page that confirms your purchase. Um, as that credit card number in that page comes back to the user, it's going to run through the ASM, and the ASM is going to recognize that that's a credit card, and it's going to block that credit card number from displaying on the screen of the user. And so that's that that's part of uh, that's that's one way that you can protect the uh, the card data. Um, also, is uh, protecting the card data is making sure that only valid users come in. And I'm going to put APM right here, um, our Access Policy Manager, um, and that thing will make sure that only valid users are able to come into your web application. And so that uh, the APM and the ASM do a lot to uh, to protect the card data. Another one is a vulnerability management program, and uh, so you need to make sure you got this vulnerability management program in place to, to secure all your data and the transactions and stuff. One cool thing that the APM does is that as a user comes through the big IP to request access to your web application, I'm going to put uh, AV check right there. One thing the APM can do is it can say, hey user, I'm going to check your client machine for a baseline uh, standard of antivirus, for example. Um, and if you don't have that, then I'm not going to let you in to access this web application. And so, uh, so the APM can do a lot of cool things with respect to that. So some of the vulnerabilities that may exist, you can actually, uh, you can actually manage those via the APM. Um, another one is strong access controls. That's what the PCI DSS guys are going to say. Strong access controls need to be in place. Um, I'll, I'll just put an underline on the APM again. That's really at the heart of what the APM does. It's the Access Policy Manager. It's going to control the access to your web application on who gets to come in. Is it a valid user? Have they, you know, are they on the list of good guys or, or bad guys? That kind of thing. It's going to let those in that are good and keep those that are bad out. Um, it also it also uses session ID. So does the ASM, by the way. These these can both use session IDs. So per session, it can track exactly who's coming in, what they're doing. And, uh, and so from an access control perspective, the ASM and the APM can both, uh, uh, can, can both be very powerful from that perspective. Um, another thing that PCI DSS says is monitor and test your networks. And we have a, we have a whole series actually of uh, light boards or white boards back in the day on monitoring and the big IP, what it can do in terms of monitoring. So it can monitor, you know, back end servers, it can, uh, you can monitor user activity again via the APM with those sessions that I was just talking about, and so uh, so you can do a lot of really cool monitoring. Uh, and then and then uh, as far as testing goes, you can you can do that as well. Um, there's also a uh, uh, some very powerful logging capabilities that the ASM APM and really any big IP module has that you can log and you can look at all the activity that goes on. Um, and then the last one is maintain a security policy. So that's the last piece that the PCI DSS guys are going to say you need to do. And, uh, and so that one is that one's a little less like technology automated thing. That's just a company, hey, let's get a policy together. Um, and, but when you put all these other things in place, those can certainly help toward the creation of a security policy. Uh, a couple other things I was going to mention is that the... Um, the ASM, I'll just write it up here, ASM, and then I'll just put report. And what you can do for the, on the ASM specifically, this is our uh, web application firewall, there's actually a little checkbox or a little button you can click actually that will create an on the fly and, and as requested whatever, just right then and there, um, PCI DSS compliance report. And so not only can it tell you that, hey, this is how we're doing, it's going to list all those different things, all those different areas that I just talked about, and it's going to put a little check mark, or it's going to put a little X, or it's going to say NA, like for example, that maintain a security policy, that's not applicable in terms of what you're going to do here. Um, but, you know, securing credit card transaction data, or, you know, maintaining strong access controls, that kind of thing, it can, it can uh, talk to those things. And so it's going to tell you right off the bat, hey, are we doing good on this? Or are we not doing good on this? Or is this not applicable for what the big IP is going to be able to do? And so again, it can tell you uh, as, as your internal company, hey, this is how we're doing. But it can also, if an auditor or an inspector or whatever comes in and says, hey, I need to know how you're doing PCI DSS wise, you can just hit that button, print the report right then and there, hand it to them and say, hey, we're all good to go. Um, so anyway, so a lot, of, a lot of really powerful stuff you can do PCI DSS wise. And again, probably 
Probably the, uh, the best part about this is rather than doing all these things on your backend web servers, you can move all that stuff out here to the big IP and let it do it all uh, because that's, you know, it's, it's custom built for a lot of this stuff and, uh, and you don't have to have the headache of all of this compliance stuff back here on these servers. Just put it on the big IP, let it do its thing. So hope you've learned a couple things on PCI DSS. Get out there, let the big IP work for you, let it get you in compliance. Thanks for watching today and we'll see you guys out there in the community.